Q&A and just like see like what kind of questions you have for her um, today. So just like start sending the questions and we will answer whatever you guys have. Can you reintroduce yourselves? We took a minute on Facebook to go live. Oh, so I'm Kimberly. I'm Amanda Herring. And so she's here and she showed us um, her friendship quilt along from Riley Blake. It starts in June of 2018. It's gonna be totally awesome. And she did like 10 videos with like tips on how you put buttons on, how to paper piece, four different ways to applique. So it's got like all kinds of learning techniques in it, cute videos. So we thought we would just do a Q&A and just see like what kind of questions you have for us today. To start us off, just while we wait for people to join, I want to ask you guys what your favorite sandwich is or sandwich-like mm. meal that can include burgers. Do I go first? I like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I love peanut butter and jelly too, but I don't eat green, so I usually opt for a hamburger without the bun. Nice. Um, Smitten Kitten is with us if you want to share. Hi, that. Smitten Kitten. Hi, Smitten Kitten. Okay. Um, so during one of your videos that we filmed, Amanda, you mentioned you like to watch movies while you're working on your projects. What do both of you like to watch while you're quilting or piecing or any projects you work on? Well, I go back and forth between audiobooks and movies. And I love, um, well, when I'm watching movies, I love anything Jane Austen-ish. So... Um, and Austin Land, I could watch that movie a thousand times, never get sick of it. And I love listening to murder mysteries and Regency period romances. <laughs> just love it. So I just listened to um, True Crime. I listened to the Investigative Discovery Channel, listen to podcasts, um, totally addicted. I'm going to Cre Crime Con in May. I don't know if any of Shut you guys up. are coming. Seriously? Yeah. That's awesome. So like... I'm gonna go meet Carl Marino and like Nancy Grace and my husband is like oh my gosh this is like your favorite vacation ever and I'm like oh I can't wait like I cannot wait to go it will probably be like my favorite thing I've ever done in my whole life so yeah I'm into like crime and I mean I'll watch like Steve Harvey I think he's funny Ellen um, like sometimes uh, sometimes I'll watch The View or um, Kelly and Ryan, yeah, like I like to watch a lot of TV. You can see. We uh, have you ever heard of the show uh, of the show Stargate SG One? So it used to be my favorite show when my when my kids were little, and now we're re reintroducing our kids to it. So we're watching that a ton. What is it? It's like sci-fi, oh. ner totally nerdy sci-fi. Oh, my kids would probably like that. I love it. It's great. Okay. Uh, people are asking, can you talk about the quilt behind you? Yes, we can. Do you want me to, or do you want to? Yeah, you talk about it, and then I'll talk about your videos. Okay, this is um, this is the friendship quilt. This is the quilt we're going to be hosting as a quilt along starting in June. And you can find the quilt kit like on our coming soon page. It's just a digital image, um, but so obviously you can see it looks a lot better. But it's called the friendship quilt kit on our website. And um, it's a free pattern, so you don't have to pay for the pattern, and you can follow along. We'll show you how to make it. We have a whole bunch of designer friends joining in. Somewhere above 30 people will be joining in to share their versions of the blocks and their ideas and um, techniques that they have. And it is all made using my newest collection that's coming out with Riley Blake called Hello Lovely. And it is so lovely. So when you get it, you're gonna say, Hello Lovely. And she's got thread sets, which are super cute. And then these templates um, to make all the applique pieces. And then she did videos um, to show, I think we did four or five different techniques on applique. So you could either do them all one way, whatever your preferred way is, or you could like step out of the box and like do some hands, some machine. Mixed techniques. Yeah, like, so we've got lots of techniques and then we've got like little buttons, which I mean, like who doesn't love buttons? Oh, especially these buttons, just another button company. They yeah. make the best buttons. Yeah, so we've got that coming and we'll release the videos like starting in June. Um, and we'll kind of each week when her designers post, we'll post videos so that y'all can get tips for that week. It's gonna be a great, great time. And the, really what we're hoping will happen through this is that we'll get to make a whole bunch of new friends. Because isn't that the best part of the quilting industry is the relationships you make and the people that you meet. That's really what it's all about for me. I love that part of it. 
And I love how she came and showed us like all these different applique techniques and she did she just did a video on paper piecing and um, I liked paper piece but I don't really know what I'm doing. I just kind of made it up. Like I never took a class. I just kind of made it up like 10 years ago how I was going to do it. And she was like showing stuff and I was like, oh, well, that would have <laughs> saved me like 20 hours or something. That's like, my favorite way to piece. I love foundation paper piecing. It's yeah. the best. So like everybody will learn like something. And so that's like the best part for me is like being able to show people at home because I never really took I mean, I took some like piecing classes, but like techniques, forget it. I just like, I used to watch Alex Anderson's TV show. Mm, yeah. So I would learn stuff that way. I don't remember what it was, Simply Quilts, I think is what it was called. I don't know, I used to watch it on HGTV all the time. And pretty much I learned some stuff that way, but like other than that, I just make stuff up. So it's good when like guests come like her, cause I can be like, oh, well, Duh. Yeah, but there's also something to be said for making stuff up and having the courage to try, you know, whatever way you can. I think that's really great. Uh, we have a question on Facebook from Sylvie. She is asking, what is the name of the fabric line on your display? Hello, lovely. Hello, lovely. It's really pretty. It's coming out. Um, it will be shipping at the end of May, so you can... Um, it's listed on Fat Quarter Shop's website, so you can see pictures of it. Uh, but actual yardage will be here next month. Oh, yeah, it's really, really pretty. Um, so kind of on the same tracks how you were so talking about favorites. what you've learned, Kimberly. Um, can you tell us more about just everything you've learned from filming with Amanda? Okay, so I've learned... Um, okay, so like I'm really scared of applique. I know I've talked about it a lot. And I think I'm just scared because one of the things Amanda and I were talking about is like I think I'm too much of a perfectionist and so like I think my applique looks bad but it really doesn't. I just I want it to be like so perfect and so I think I should just like go for it. Like not be as nervous and um, I liked how in this quilt she used different techniques so like you don't get bored so like she did some wool you could do by hand she did some like freezer paper by hand and then like two different machine methods and so I think that that makes it more fun because you're not I mean you know sometimes when you quilt it's like the same thing over and over and over and then you like give up because you're like oh I'm bored so I think on this one it's gonna be really cool I would actually like maybe try it because it would be different things each time I also think, I, can I say something? Yeah. yeah. Mind. I also think that it's really important to realize that we do this thing about wanting our quilts to be perfect, but we're willing to accept something that's not perfect from someone else. We need to be a little right. easier on ourselves. And, you know, you're never going to get good at something until you try it. And I, I really am not great at needle turn applique. It really looks bad. But I still love the look of that. So finding ways to accomplish it without yeah. going all the way, it's, it's great. Yeah, I'm totally into that 10,000 hour rule. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't even know who the yeah. author is, but like I truly believe that rule. I've read that book and like, yeah, there's going to be no chance that Malcolm I'm ever going to. Yeah. That Malcolm guy. Gladwell. Yeah, I'm never going to be the 10,000 on the applique, but I'm way past 10,000 on piecing. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm just like making stuff no, up. No, I just think it's a, I think it's great because everybody, you know, has this, has this idea that people are perfect or that they have a perfect technique or that they know exactly yeah. what they're doing. And you don't have to know exactly what you're doing to just dive in and do it. It's okay to just do it from where you're at right now. And like one thing I always talk about is like, do whatever works for you. Like mm -hmm. do whatever's fun. Like when I first took my first quilting class, they had all these rules and I hated it. Cause I was just like, why can't I just do it my way? Cause I just want to like do what I want to do. Like well, in life, that's kind of how Kimberly Jolly is. Like if you're like friends with me, you know, like I just like, I have so much on my plate. I just like do what I do cause it works. Right. And both and of us talked about how we would rather make our blocks a little bit bigger, bigger sometimes and, and trim, trim it down. down and maybe not yeah. everybody likes that, but that's okay. Yeah. And like, I was talking to her about how one of our number one comments on YouTube is like, you waste so much fabric. And it's just the way I do it because I like it. So it's just, it's funny because everyone does something different and I'm a big proponent of do whatever you want. Like you can watch me do it and be like, that is so stupid. I'm going to do it my way. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Like, yeah. like I love like, even like if it's a negative, I don't take it like it's a negative comment. I take it as like, cool, like do it your way. Like, mm -hmm. 
Anyway, what's yeah. the next question? Because I'm just rambling. <laughs> but it's good rambling. It's good rambling. Um, we have one from Stro Sewn Straight from the Heart on Instagram, and she was asking, is the quilt mainly applique or paper piecing or like 50-50? It is everything. It's like so, all of it. So like... Oh, applique, applique, um, applique, pieced, pieced, and it's got a little pieced and applique, pieced and applique, pieced, applique. Um, the 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 paper is piecing paper piece. is just this block is the mm -hmm. only paper piecing, and this is pieced and pieced. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a mix. And you got like flying geese. You get. I mean, you kind of get to do a little bit of everything with this. And like these are the same block but different colors. Mm -hmm. And this one too. And in the kit, uh, there's a wool kit, like in the quilt kit that you can buy at Fat Core Shop, there's a wool kit and you can use it anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. And so you don't even have to use the wool. It's just there if you don't want to use the cotton. If you want to try it and you don't like it, you're still going to have enough of the cotton. So it gives you yeah, variety. Like right here, I replaced these leaves with wool and up there in the corner. And like this little piece yeah. right here, like she did cotton wool, cotton. And I love to do this piece in wool because it's so tiny. The little template is so tiny that it's yeah. just tricky to do with cotton if you're you gonna like, do yeah too many points. Too many points. So I like to use wool for that because it just makes it look nice and crisp and super easy. And like all the thread is really cool on this one because when you're appliquing, you can use different accents on different pieces, and they're just the perfect color. So. And who doesn't love Aurafil thread? Yeah, like really, it's like the best thing it ever. Is. It is. Um, someone was pointing out the jean jacket. They said they love it. So oh my gosh, it's so it. cute. Okay, so, yeah. Can you grab it? Yeah. So look how cute it is. Like, um, it's got cuffs. I tried to put it on yesterday because I thought I was being funny. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny, but I only got like one arm in because I was like, oh, it would be so funny you if I wore it. Like, no, no, that's no, not. <laughs> no, but I was like, it's so cute. Maybe you can wear it. It's size eight. Yeah. You know what? I just bought... I just bought it at a thrift store um, and added the details with. It's got like button. So like this is what is this fusible? Raw I just said edge. A fusible raw edge. And then cake. like double these have little buttons. Cute little buttons, and there's like uh, they're just another button company. So she's got like the smoothie pack, the party pack. Um, that shows I know way too much about their <laughs> buttons. And then she just did like little buttons, like she did buttons on top of buttons. And we actually have a video on just another button company on how to do that. And I just cut a piece to fit the cuff. And then um, I had to hand sew the inside here, but everything else was machine sewn. And then I just did a little cut. bit of fabric glue in around the snap. Yeah, so cute. So easy. It really took me like a half hour to put it together. Oh, and then I wanted to remind y'all that we have a, I have a Facebook group called Kimberly Stitch Squad, and we're doing lots of giveaways there. Like every Monday I've been doing a big giveaway. So if you want to join that, it's a great community to ask me questions. I've been answering questions. Um, sometimes I am like super honest and say I don't know the answer, but somebody in the group will. So definitely join that. And then also on these Q and A's that we do, if you do the super chat on YouTube, um, we can see your questions easier because we have like a bunch of cameras and a bunch of comments. So like if you definitely like you have a question you like have to have answered, do super chat. Oh, um, let's see. Uh, it was up here earlier. Oh, um, K Solo fifty nine um, asked uh, Fraser Bill, what's the best and e what's the best way to learn quilting? Well, that's a good question, and I think it really for me it depends on the person. I'm t completely self taught. Um, and I was self-taught before the advent of YouTube or blogs, a, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff like that. I like to figure things out for myself. I know you're a lot the same way. So I, you know, I think if it, my preferred method would be go online, find a video, watch a video. Maybe go, maybe your option is to go to a class. I prefer not to learn in a class situation. I like to learn on my own because I, I just feel like I thrive a little bit better there. But I think everybody kind of needs a little bit of a different way to learn. Don't yeah. you think so? Yeah. I mean, if it was me and I had to redo it, I would take probably like one class just to maybe get cutting down or mm -hmm. just to kind of watch how people hold their rulers. But I would, all the piecing stuff, like I was talking about, like with paper piecing, I didn't take a class. I just like, I 
actually it just out. like made it up. <laughs> and obviously, when I was watching her video today, I was like, yeah, that I was not doing that right the whole time. Well, I, I don't, but, I don't know that there's always a right and a yeah. wrong, you know. Also, another great thing is to join a quilt guild or a quilt yeah. group that you know likes to get together a little sewing circle where you can learn in a more intimate type setting. That's a great way to learn too. Um, we do have a few questions here on Facebook. Angela is asking, are applique quilts okay for use or are they more for decoration? Oh, I say use it. Use it. Enjoy it. Um, I think sometimes people spend all the time applicating it and then they don't want to use it because they know the right. amount of time they put into it. But um, I, I don't really see a point of making something that you're not going to use. Make something that you're going to use and love and wear it out. Yeah. Enjoy it. Um, and the question from Diane, what is the kit called? Friendship Quilt Kit. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I have uh, one more. Um, Barkar Stude Baker um, asked, uh, what kind of weight, uh, what kind or weight do you use in the Orfil thread? Well, this is 50 weight, right? Yeah, yeah, this is 50 weight. Which is great for quilting. Um, and so, like on the wool, if you were doing wool, you might want to use RF floss. Mm -hmm. um, I use 50 weight for everything, even if I'm like stitch in the ditch quilting on top. I pretty much just use 50 weight. Um, I think it's cool to use other weights. I just am like creature of habit. Um, yeah, me too. But Arful has like a lot of weights, but I would do 50. Some people do quilting with the 40 weight because it's a little bit thicker and less likely to break. Um, so. I use this to applique as well. I yeah. use the 50 weight for all my applique. And to put there. the buttons on. Uh, we got a question on YouTube from Connie. Uh, she is asking, do you have to buy the templates or are they already in the kit? Oh, I think they're in the kit, right? No, you, so you have to buy the templates separate, I think. I don't know, Sammy, what do you think? I thought we were including them. Is the, um, you can do both. I mean, No, but have, is the template in the kit? Do no, these we, we sold them separate. Yeah, they're sold separately. Okay. And so that might not be on our website, but it will later today. I'm not sure if it's But on here's the really cool thing. So you can... You, you can you know, like, like iron on them. You can't iron on these. Oh. So don't iron on these. <laughs> but it, you know, if even if you don't want to make the quilt, but you like the templates, you can see we used them in the in the jean jacket, and we've got some fun things around here that we've made using them. These are great for all kinds of things, and there's lots of great shapes that you can use over and over again. We yeah, showed some fun flower. ideas in the videos of yeah. how to use these. You could do like a little flower and a leaf. It's so oh yeah. Cute. And it you know doesn't even have to be part of the quilt. These are things that you will use over, over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, some, some people are saying that our website says the templates are in the kit. Mm -hmm. No, they're, they're not. not. Okay. They're not. So um, both on website. Yeah, they're, so, they're, so they're, they're both on the website. They're um, sold separately. And then um, we will have a better photo of that quilt on the website next week. That's a, like a real photo. Okay. Uh, another question on YouTube from Lauren, have you ever made chenille? Is it difficult and or do you have any tips or tricks for a newbie quilter? That's awesome because we were going to totally do it in this quilt. Oh, you were? We are. We're showing it in the quilt along. Oh, okay. So I've never done it. it. No. It's fantastic. And we're going to, um, we're making a couple more versions of this when we make it. We're going to replace the stems in this block right here. Oh yeah, the little skinny. Half we're going to replace those with the chenille and it's super easy to use um you just sew it down and then wash it it's like it's, it's yeah. a piece of cake yeah yeah the people that i know that have done it like love it yeah if you follow along on the quilt along uh, we'll, we'll be showing some of that too and so the quilt along is going to be hosted on her blog so oh, tell yeah. them your url uh amandaherringdesigns.com and then you can just click blog from there and everything will be hosted there. You'll be able to download the pattern and print it from there. And that's where you can follow along, link to all of our friends that will be sharing their stuff. Also Instagram, um, at Amanda Herring Designs. We'll have a lot of information there, lots of pictures. We're gonna be featuring, um, we'll have a setup so you can see all the prints with what they're called. So you'll know how to reference those in the pattern. It's gonna be great. You can ask any questions there and come be our friends there because that's really the point, right? Friendship. Right. All right, um, got a few questions on YouTube. 
Uh, Connie is asking, great question about chenille. I'm trying to use it on a quilt. Can you use a glue stick to hold it down? Uh, temporarily, but you do have to sew it. Stitch it. Yeah, I, I think a glue stick is a great way to not use pins. Yeah, anytime. Anytime I can glue something <laughs> instead of pin it. I mean, if I could glue buttons on instead of sew them, I would, but, you know, don't do that. Um, Lynn Marie on YouTube is asking, I'm a beginner and would like to know if sear sucker fabric can be used for quilts. Can I say that right? I would totally say yes. It's a, it's I think it's thinner. usually, it it's usually has a poly a little bit, just... I, my only thing would be it might shrink up differently than yeah, the cottons cotton. you put it. So just make sure whatever you're using together has been pre-shrunk. Yeah, pre-wash it. And then I would also say like you might need a little bit tighter quilting on it just because it's more, it's thinner. So yeah. I would do slightly tighter quilting than I would on cotton just because it might need a little bit more stability to hold it down. I've never done it, um, but like I said, yeah. Yeah. Do it. Maybe even put a lightweight interfacing on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like if you like iron that on the back, it'll give it a little bit of stability mm -hmm. when you're sewing it, and it won't shift as much because it's gonna shift kind of like it's gonna be kind of like working with on the bias, right? Like it's gonna yeah, shift a little, a little bit, a little bit slipperier, more slippery, slipperier. That's a word. Yeah, it's our word. Yeah, we just made it up. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of off topic, but what's a similarity between the two of you? <gasps> oh, let's see. We like we both have a dog. Oh, I love my dog. My husband thinks I love my dog more than, than I love him, and I don't, and he watches these, so he can just like watch this and know that I still love him, but I do love my dog. And we both have twins. Oh, but, yeah, we do. But she has girls, and I have boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mine are, yours are 11? Eight. Eight. Hers are eight. Mine are 12. Yeah. But we both survived. We're survivors of twins. Yeah. Uh, they're my, actually, like, my easiest kids. Uh, and all my kids watch Mine my too. all my kids watch my live stream. So I'm just letting you know I love all of you. <laughs> Whoever's behaving at the moment is the best <laughs> child. But the easiest to raise have definitely been the twins. Um, question on YouTube from Smitten Kitten: uh, Does Amanda prefer making quilts or other sewing projects like the jacket bags, etc.? Uh, I totally love sewing things that are a little bit unusual. So. I love using quilting cottons always and I love making quilts but if I could I like thinking of like my slipper pattern was you know things oh, yeah. outside the box I like doing things that are a little bit more unusual I like the thinking process of figuring out I really like this how would I make that and reverse engineering it and making it and there's a little bit of that in quilting but sometimes um, as much as I love quilting I'm not I'm just not a precision piecer and that's okay it really is because not everybody is so sometimes I find that I get a little bit frustrated when I have to sew a block three or four times to get it to turn out exactly like I like it yeah. and I I feel like sometimes sewing other things gives me a little bit more flexibility yeah and I'm totally opposite of her because like I yeah totally opposite because I feel like I can like really precision piece but I'm less creative um, and uh, like a little bit less creative uh, so a little scared to step outside that box and we did talk about that today that you know it seems like you're either a sewer or a quilter and there are people that do both mm -hmm. but it is rare mm -hmm. I know y'all might send me hate mail for that but <laughs> I think people who don't quilt but sew find quilting intimidating and people who yep. quilt but don't do clothing find clothing intimidating it's like that whole zipper versus quarter inch seam business yep. you know that there's yep. like a there's like a two sides but it's kind of like left brain right brain mm, kind of yeah. thing like brains work different ways that's what I think um, and then Nat Trap 13 um, had a question for Amanda which is what do you need to do to be a fabric designer oh that's a good question um, I think the first thing you need is to be tenacious and know that that's really what you want to do and it's going to be a lot of work and you've got to be willing to put in the time and figure it out. Um, for me, when I started, I had no idea what I was doing. It took me eight months to really figure out the process of what, what went into a line of fabric and, and how to create it and I had to learn how to do it all digitally. Not, not all companies require you to have it digitally, but it's a great way to present your fabric because you're already ahead, right? You don't have to do the computer part of it. Um, and you have to have a good design style. You have to know the difference between 
what you like and how you draw and, and what think, you like and what will sell yep absolutely and then you know forming a great rela relationship with a fabric manufacturing company that can really guide you through the process somebody that you can work hand in hand with and become a team with it's it's you know I, I know that it probably seems like we just draw this and it's all glamorous and then it shows up on fabric but the process is really long and oftentimes very difficult and you know you have to get over the whole ego thing of this is my artwork and this is how i want it and kind of step into a world where you say how do i marry what i love and what i want to draw with what's going to sell and what people are really going to love too um but i would definitely not discourage you from trying i think um go for it try it uh, just know that it's a it's uh it's not as easy as you might think but it's very rewarding Okay, we've got a question on Facebook from Angela. Um, she says she also learned to sew on her own, and she has what she says is a newbie question. When you pin, is there a way that uh, you're supposed to pin where the fabric won't shift? I feel like whenever I pin, my fabrics shift. Is this normal? Oh, gosh, we totally talked about that a little bit yesterday, huh? Do you have them um, down there? I've got some. We have some pins here. Have, have you seen the new forked pins? Because those are fantastic. I just bought some to try because I find... Mine, mine are over there. Do you, there's a bag, just a big bag of stuff over there. So um, I pin, I'll show you how I pin, and then she can show you how she pins. Yeah, just bring it up. So I just grabbed some fabric from under the table. I don't know, like fabric. So the pins that I use, I only use these pins. Uh, they're drips and they're, they're white. Um, glass head pins and they're super thin and they stick you and you bleed and I love them but they're sharp so the way that I pin a lot of people will pin um, like diagonally and that drives me nuts because I cannot it I feel like the fabric shifts so when I pin I try to pin up and down and I feel like if I pin kind of up and down it's less likely to move than if it's sideways so that's kind of how I pin um, just up and down, very simple. I like really long and really thin um, pins. I, I'm i really picky about my pins, I would say. Um, this is all I use, um, but yeah, she likes these. So I, I don't know if you. I like them. I just got them to try. They're like a forked pin, so it's got two, two sides so that if you're you know piecing together two blocks, you can line your seams up and then, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it just... And it worked really good with applique because it kind of gave it a little bit more stability. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just put one pin in, your applique can easily move. And when she did it on the applique, it was, it was awesome. Great. Yeah, it and really just, keeps it secure. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I'm new to these, but I think it's a brilliant way to try to keep your seams lined up. I'm gonna give it a give it a go. Um, along the same lines on YouTube. Uh, knit and spin for fun is asking what is your favorite way to baste a quilt pin based or spray have my quilter do it that's my <laughs> is answer. that the answer have yeah. my quilter baste it for so, me <laughs> um, so what I do I don't ever if I quilt it will be a pillow that is the biggest I will quilt and when I quilt with a pillow this answer is not gonna help you at all but I'm just gonna like answer it my way I use by Annie soft and stable because it doesn't move and I love oh, yeah. that it's very yeah. like it gives it the like you can actually Body. see the quilting i love it yeah and it won't shift and i don't have to pin i don't have to do anything but yeah i um i do love my annie it's there's yeah so great so that's what i do when i'm at home but um i have you spray based quite a bit yeah for other things like you know in this or i have quilted a pillow before i do like spray based i can't imagine liking machine basting yeah i mean i guess if i had to quilt something to be honest, I would just use pins and stick myself. That, <laughs> because I, I just would, because that's what I have. I wouldn't go buy something else that I didn't have in my sewing room, but yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we helped you, but we were honest. <laughs> Good luck with that. We, we were honest at least. Um, real quick, back to the question about designing fabric. Yeah. Connie on YouTube is asking, is there a computer program for designing fabric? Yes. Um, most designers use Adobe Illustrator and that's what I use um, that's where my 10,000 hours is is in design and um, there are others but they're less 
good if that's a good way to say that they're not they're not as superior as adobe illustrator it's a very robust program and it takes I, quite a bit of time to learn but it's worth it it's um really a fantastic program hope that helps um i think we had one um that was uh from linked by threads and she said i think we may have gone over this but she said uh do you think fabric should be pre-washed before piecing oh I never pre-wash. Do you pre-wash? I don't pre-wash at all. And I did a video like two weeks ago. And it was, it's on, if you go to YouTube, it's on there. It was two weeks ago, Friday. It's also in the Kimberly Stitch Squad and on the Fat Quarter Shop Facebook page. I starch everything and drench it and let it hand dry for 24 hours. And that's how I pre-wash. It's not pre-washed. It has chemicals. It stinks up your house. Yes, that's what I do. I love <laughs> I it. I would think it wouldn't matter too much as long as you're not yeah. sewing with something that's pre-shrunk and something that's not. Yeah, if you if you pre-wash, you either do all of it pre-washed. Yeah. If you don't pre-wash, you don't pre-wash. Um, everyone does it kind of their own mm. way. I used to just use a lot of starch as I was piecing, but then I would have to like starch and then let it dry and then everything kind of shrunk. Lori kind of taught me she was like yeah you're just because when I was sewing with her Lori Holt was like yeah everything's like shrinking and then I got the idea I took the idea Lisa Bonjean does it and so she taught me how to do it but yeah it adds a whole another day to my process but I love it like I would never do what anything. kind of search do you use um faultless faultless they know yeah faultless with the gold lid okay yeah and like I, a spray like yeah. this? Yeah, and I soak it, mm. and I lay it on my bathtub, and yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll have to try that. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, we've got a question from Laureen on YouTube. She is asking, are there other colorways for the quilt along, or only the pastel shown? I love earth tone, so am I able to make my own color selections and still participate? Absolutely. Yeah. Just buy the templates. And download the pattern. It'll tell you what you need for fabrics, and you can buy whatever you want. We would love for you to tag us in it when you make it, so we can see it your way. Because that's yeah, and a lot really of fun. her designers are using different fabrics, mm -hmm. so you could get ideas from yeah. them too when they start showing stuff. Um, we did have a question about the quilt along. Someone was asking, when does it start? June first, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, I think June first is the first Friday in June. Is that right? I'm pretty sure. First Friday in June. How about we just say that and then we won't lead you astray. Um, and then AK Rhubarb asks, uh, can you explain the explain cutting on the bias for quilt blocks? Um, so basically pretend this is just a square or a rectangle or pretend it's a square. We're going to make it a square. Ta-da, it's a square. <laughs> um, when you cut on the bias, anything on the diagonal, whether it be this direction or this direction is on the bias. So if you're sewing, this is on the straight of grain, anything on the side, that's on the straight of grain. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna stretch as much. that. But if you cut on the diagonal, it is going to stretch. And I would, anytime I'm cutting on the diagonal, I'm just very careful that my ruler is on the exact corner. It's not moved anywhere. Sometimes when I'm making pieces that go on the outside of a block, I will actually cut my square bigger, cut on the diagonal. I always pin no matter what mm -hmm. because it is going to stretch. And when you put that pit, those pins in, it really helps it keep together. And then I'll trim it down later. That way I don't have to worry so much about the bias. But um, I would say when you're working with bias, it's just touch it less, be more gentle, and use pins. Never stretch it in your machine at all. Yeah, I mean, like, if, like, when you're looking at a fabric, and it took me a long time to realize this, but, like, this is a straighter grain. It doesn't, it doesn't move. But if you go on the diagonal, it moves. So, there's really no way to prevent it. Um, you just have to be gentler. Gentler, okay. like slipperier. Yeah. We have Two a words. totally legit question legit. from Janet on Facebook. Okay. Legit. Too legit to quit. Sorry. Uh -huh. You're good. Um, Janet is asking, where do you get your inspiration? That is a legit question. <laughs> I get that question quite a bit. And it gets harder and harder to answer as the years go on. This is, I think, my 16th collection. 
And you know, really at this point, it just comes down to, I like drawing flowers. I really do. I just, I'm a girl, I'm a girly girl. I like florally, cutesy, sweet things. And you know, um, it's just kind of who I am. And I've, I've moved away from the point of like, I was inspired by, I did a, 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 a collection that was inspired by Jane Austen, which was fantastic and I loved it. And it was great to have that inspiration. But, but at this point, I'm just drawing things that make me happy. I'm just drawing And you always have out. clear colors. There's always a pink and there's always a touch of red. And turquoise. Always. 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 And so you can mix and match her collections really well and like all yeah. her collections sell really well for us. No, okay, I've got some. Um, our white on YouTube is asking, would layer cakes work for the cool salon? No. Mm -mm. Sorry. No. Um, some of the blocks are 12 by 12. Well, one block is 12 by, yeah. Yeah, some of them are just wider, and so yeah. you, would have, you would have scenes where, and it would look funny, so yeah, no. I mean, I, I guess you could, could use like little pieces, but it would probably be, be more wasteful than not. Wasteful. You could make it and not make all of the bigger blocks. Just make the smaller blocks and make some extra smaller blocks and piece it together in your own way. Okay. Um, we kind of mentioned it already, but someone's just tuning in and they're asking, is there a web page for what is needed for the quilt along? Yes. It's not posted yet, but it'll be on amandaherringdesigns.com and we'll be posting that soon. And so you're going to need the friendship quilt kit, the friendship templates, the RFL thread box that's called Hello Lovely, and um, some buttons. We're going to have buttons. a friendship button pack by just another button company, and we can get you can get all of it at Fat Quarter Shop. Well, I'm out of questions over here. Okay, so we're going to end the Q and A, but I was going to um, next week. Um, we're, I don't know if we're going to do the Q&A on Thursday or Friday because my daughter has dance, but I need ideas. So can you please comment and give me an idea of what y'all want to see for next week? Um, something easy, please, because I don't have that much time this week. But yeah, don't tell me a bag because I don't have time to make a bag. But um, something like that y'all want to learn or talk about. Um, and I don't know if it'll be Thursday or Friday, but we'll post it like by Wednesday. So, you know, but yeah. And thanks, Amanda, for coming. Thanks so much for having me. This was my first Facebook, Instagram, YouTube live. So she might be addicted, and maybe she'll do it like every week. Yes, won't that be exciting for you? <laughs> Can you remind people to subscribe? Oh yeah, and subscribe, oh, yeah. subscribe to subscribe. YouTube, subscribe to Facebook, Instagram, follow Back Quarter Shop, follow us, and then join my Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook. You will love it.